Hey, we're starting to record it. We're 34 seconds in. Yeah, and I'm already pissed, man. That's... I drove... I was in such a good mood. Yeah, I know. I drove over here. By the way, Freddie Prince. Josh Wolf. Prince, Prince in the Wolf. Wolf. Oh, it's yeah. Stereo. And by the way, both what? sweet-ass haircuts. Yeah, we do. We do have some nice And haircuts. we kind of went same haircut-y. I went a little longer on the sides. Well, you're wearing a hat, so I can't tell what you did. No, don't take it off because okay. it's it not ruins the illusion. Gonna look right. I, I know it really you took it off earlier. Nah, it just doesn't look the same. You gotta, you gotta like, you know, mess with it a bit. Oh, my hat's it's, on. It's yeah. hard hat. Head it doesn't right look now. good yet. No, it's like Barney Rubble out to the side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know what it looks like? It looks like a dude who hasn't showered in two days, and uh, that would be why. Ooh, that's gross. <laughs> Let me tell you, why I was in a great mood before I got over yeah. here. I love every, that. It was every every week. Week. Driving on Sunset. Mm -hmm. um, I just crossed over Doheny. Oh, so yeah. Sunset's starting to get a little bit funkier, yeah. right? That's where people are, you know, walking and what they were wearing last night. Yeah. yeah some people are expressing themselves. Some mm -hmm. people are passed out asleep and the bottle of liquor is still next to them. Mm -hmm. Like it's an interesting drive in, right? And then I get a little further in, like closer to La Brea and, and the actual like Hollywood strip past mm -hmm. the man theater all that good stuff. And then it gets cooler. Then I get closer to here, to the studio, about three blocks away. And I see this guy dressed in super tight black jeans. I mean, tight. Mm -hmm. Okay. He has some Chuck Taylor Converse on. All right. Right. I like him. He had a white t-shirt on that wasn't too tight. Right. But wasn't like super baggy. And he had this slick do-rag that made his fro like kind of tube up at the top. Like oh, a like hard a kid cylinder. Kind of, but it went in and then like just like a chimney smokestack on top. Uh, like a muffin top. Yeah. And I was like, dang, but it didn't come out and over. It was tight. Like, yeah. Everything was held. And I was like, man, that guy's style. Like a, like a good sushi roll. Yeah. And I'm like, that guy's style is nice. And then I look down and he's got a leash and he's walking a stuffed beaver. Wait, not a real beaver. No, it's stuffed for sure. So he wasn't walking. He was dragging. He would tell you he was walking because I actually talked to him. Was it on wheels? No. It was just, in his world, it, it was walk. Look, me driving to work is weird as hell for him. Yeah. But normal for me. Yeah. Him, you know. Do you know how badly I want to go out and find this dude right now? Uh, well, I'm going to ask people to find him. But be cool to him because let me tell you how cool this guy is. I roll down my window. I'm at the stoplight. I got to say something, right? Yeah, like but, nice beaver. No, I didn't say that. I looked at him <laughs> and I said, uh. I said, hey, man, I like your style. Yeah. He said, thanks, man. I said, what are you doing? He said, I'm walking my beaver. What are you doing? Mm. And he said it like that. And I was like, oh, man, I'm just going to work. Have a great day. Yeah. And he goes, you too. And I just rolled up the window. I was like, yo, he wasn't having it. No. Like, he just straight, I'm walking my beaver. And, and it had a diamond necklace Let around Let me ask you neck. two questions. And, yeah. no, you didn't fucking hear me. The fake beaver yeah. that he was pulling had a fake diamond necklace around its neck. Yeah, I got a couple questions for you. That's okay. it. That's all the info there is. Yeah, I know, I know. But you're going to have to, you're going to have to clue me in on a few things. Is he walking the beaver because he's crazy or because he's funny? No, he's not. Look, in his Not crazy, but you know what I mean. In his reality. Yeah. This is what he does in the morning. He walks his you pet take beaver. Your pet out in the morning. Yeah. So that's you know, that's who he is. And and how long was the leash? Was he dragging it like it was a, a regular dog leash, bro? Yeah. With, a, with a fake diamond dog collar wrapped around a stuffed animal. And did he stop to let the beaver pee? Or nah, he he was walking his beaver. He wasn't. Yeah. It wasn't peeing. I stopped at the light. I said, "What up? I like your style." He said, thanks. I said, what you doing? He said, I'm walking my beaver. What are you doing? And yeah. said, you really hard. I said, I'm going to work. Have a nice day. He said, you too. And then he walked with his beaver down whatever that little street is there at the Laugh Factory, Crescent, oh, yeah. or whatever it is. Should and we, that was it. What do we what do we what do we call this? This is this is a good show. It's like Beaver and Muffin Top. What's the name this of this is show? This Beaver Man, bro. Beaver Man. <laughs> <laughs> Is Beaver Man on the side of Electric Ram guy? He could be like the re the reporter that's doing news. Yeah, that's but, doing but he for talks his own to beavers. But on his own YouTube channel, that's very beaver centric. Well, you know what I think? He does. He has his, his special news, powers his that he can speak to beavers. No, dude, and beavers, he can have beavers break, make dance and shit. Give him powers. No, he's just a dude with a YouTube channel who does the news with beaver puppets. Oh, I love it. But he's it. got like a Tom Brokaw voice <laughs> for this beaver. <laughs> 
Ladies and gentlemen, a man with ram horns was seen last night. Wait. Climbing the Hollywood sign. What if he only does news, news about beavers? It could be that, just but this intrigues news. him because they're animals. It's yeah. just animal news, I think. Animal news, but he, and he's beaver-centric. These new hybrid people are yeah. something that interests him. People might think it's a conspiracy. They think he's just some whack job until these creatures come out. What's the best con- Beaver be- man. What's the best? <laughs> That's his what, out. What's the best? <laughs> What's the best? And then, and then a fake uh, cartoon beaver uh, with his Just teeth going, makes makes the beaver sign out of no, wood. No, it's a beaver a, man. It's a sign that says fake news, but the beaver chews through the fake news to get to the truth. Oh shit! Now let me ask beaver you a question. Man. There's a bug. If it flies by, I'm Miyagi in that shit. If you grab that bug out of the air. As he, it's on your arm. Boom, got him. Did you? Maybe not. <laughs> yeah. It was a mosquito for yeah, sure, though. That he is, wanted blood. That Because he heard you talking about beaver, man. Well, What's he, the he best combination, beaver and what animal? Because hawk gorilla, hard to beat, obviously. And I think we've had an e- like a uh, some sort of eagle gator, I think. I mean, Al beavers eagle. are pretty relentless. Yeah. Their bite, they need some size. Though. Their bite can snap your bone. And they can, they're good with wood. Right? Yeah. So, but do we want something now? Like, what? what you would, either need to make it fly or you have to make it. Because it's already gigantic. good in the water. It's good in yeah, the water. Yeah, he's fine in the water. Yep. He can fight already. He knows how to fight. He's scrappy. Yeah, they're scrappy as hell. And if they get you, I've watched those like uh, Alaska mountain men shows. Yeah. Where they like trap beaver. And like, you'll understand if it's alive and it's not in that snare and it gets your foot, your foot is gone. I've got you. What? See, to me, I think that the the beaver needs a little speed and needs a little help on land. So it's, I'm going to combine a beaver and a jaguar, and I'm going to go a beavoir. <laughs> That's just because of the name. Yeah. Because <laughs> the jaguar is not the best cat for that. Yeah, but it, yeah, but, but it can't be a beta. It could be a cheetah. It could a be a tiger. How do you do it? A beaver tiger. Uh, Well, a tiger is a beaver. A biger? Biger. Well, we already have a liger. We do have a lot, but tigers swim. Tigers actually dig. We the water. already got a beaver swimming. Oh yeah, you're right. Like a lion. So yeah, it's got to be like a cheetah. A now cheetah. I'm just be looking for that mosquito. Jaguar. There he cheetah. is. Oh, I did get him, and he was fucked up. And oh, you son of a bitch. Get right. him, Josh. Get right. him. All right, here we get go. Him. Here we go. This, this, by the way, guys. No, they'll see it on the video. Yeah, this. Come back! I dare you. Oh, talking shit to son the mosquitoes, of a bitch, Freddie. I have to tell you about my weekend in Philadelphia. <laughs> yeah, I saw some of it on Instagram. There are so many things to discuss. These had to be late show stories yes. that you're about you to You know tell. my late shows get a little wacky. And by the way. They're getting wackier. Yes. And you're by the way, starting to encourage it, and it's going to get dangerous soon. Soon you'll be I, doing like bullet catches like from I the I don't prestige. even encourage it. They offer it. <laughs> so let me just say a couple things. Because you all, encourage it on this podcast. I just talk about how much I like it. I mean, first of all, let me just say this. I, I had a couple of over 40-year-old white women come up to me at the show and say, <laughs> and say, hey, I know you don't like us. Let me just clarify. <laughs> let me clarify. I, 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 what I'm saying is, and I love having you all at the show because we have a lot of the same sensibilities. we have about the same age. A lot of us have kids. We've gone through it. Older kids. I love having you all at the show. All I was saying is, as far as disruptors and hecklers, yep, the worst ones. I'm not saying every group of over forty year old white rich white women. That's all I'm saying. And I said rich. I'm not saying everyone, but They're I'm usually saying drunk. As far as disruptors, yeah, over forty year old rich white you women, disruptive little are mongrels. the worst disruptors. Not every. I don't dislike you as a group. I don't dislike anyone as a group. I'm saying, as far as disruptors go, they are the toughest group. Now. That being said, a couple things this weekend. I don't even know where to start. First of all, I know where you should start. I'm going to do that one last. Oh, that's the best one. Let let me just say this as far as I had a very Murica, Murica moment. Nice. nice. So Beth was with me and she's never been to Philadelphia. And um, why would you bring someone you love there? I love you, Philly, but there's so many cool things. You say. guys are so rough, man. Independent, but independent. Y'all got to work some issues. But so much Ouch. history there, and Rockies there. This country just over 200 years old. That's not that much friggin' history. For Get this out of country, here. it is. Yeah, the Independence Hall was super cool to go see. All that stuff was super cool. But so she was like, I, "I've never been to the Rocky 
And I go, cool. I go, there's also a, the Philadelphia, the art museum there is amazing, right? So this is my Murica moment. We go and the Rocky statue is at yeah, the bottom yeah. of the steps. It's a great statue. Right? And so there's nice. a line, a long line. And I think it's- A, a line for the statue? I say to the people, I go, is this a line for the museum? Dude looks at me and goes, what museum? I go, That's at amazing. the top of those fucking steps, dude. <laughs> he goes, I thought those were the Rocky steps. I go, oh my God. <laughs> I, are, first of all, those are the Rocky steps. I guess steps. they are the Rocky F steps. You. They are. But they lead to the Philadelphia, like an enormous. Which is an okay place. Oh my God. And remember at the end of Rocky Five, it goes, Dad, they're at the top of the steps. I can't wait to show you all these great artists. You're going to love Picasso. And then Rocky doesn't know Picasso is a painter. He thinks he's just a friend of his kid. He goes, yeah. yeah, well, I like just about everybody. Yeah. That's, see, that's the Rocky Stairs. That's that museum. So that made me laugh that the guy didn't even know there was a museum at the top of the stairs. I didn't. Made me laugh. <laughs> so, okay. Thought it was a library. Two, two. <laughs> Two amazing things. One, so after both shows, I walked outside of this venue. And by the way, the Punchline in Philadelphia is a fucking great venue in a cool new neighborhood. We walk, and it's new and new, near a new Fillmore Theater. Have you ever heard of the Philadelphia Nitrous Mafia? <laughs> no. Okay, you ready for this? <laughs> so you walk outside. Street racers? No, they carry tanks of nitrous and they sell balloons for $5 with nitrous in it. And people just sit up against the walls and take hits off of these balloons. It was like walking. Freddie. How do you run from the cops with a giant tank of nitrous? I asked that. They open it up and roll it away. And by the time the cops can get to it, the tank is empty. <laughs> They're like, what, well, man? I was carrying a tank. The tank is empty. I just like tanks, bro. Right? So Tank collector. They, okay. Fire teams over there. I was it was, Freddie, you would have loved this. So this, this alleyway and these people just sitting up against walls, taking hits off balloons. It's eerie, right? It's like That's, the walking dead. terrible. You just hear the balloons go. <laughs> and then you can hear from the end of the alley, the dealers just clang the, the containers together. It's about a Mad Max. Bung. Oh, dude, it was amazing. It was one of the weirdest things I've ever seen. But it's so... <laughs> But my sat my Friday night late show. Death gong. Gong. Yeah, my Friday night late show. Gong. I'm telling a story. And about uh this wrestling story that I tell, my best practical joke ever. And I'm telling a story. And this woman, we're talking about this big woman um who gets hired to beat people up in hotel rooms. And uh I said, you know, there are other people who don't do it as fun for as much fun. They actually like to, guys like to be punched in the nuts. And this one woman in the audience says, how do I sign up for that job? I go, all you got to do is, is say you want to punch someone in the nuts. And she goes, well, I do. I'd love to punch someone in the nuts. So I go, oh. And now there was a bachelor party there that I had been fucking with a little bit all night. And his name was Felipe. I go, Felipe, you ready? And his friends start chanting, Felipe, Felipe. Is Felipe behind you? No. Okay, wait, 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 wait. That looks like Andrew Schultz. But okay, so, <laughs> so, okay, so. So it also looks like the dude and the fucking, the new dude back there. Like all of you guys kind of look the same. He really does look like him. Holy shit. Oh my God. So they flew him in for the bit. That's nice. So I, uh, I go, Felipe, you ready to get punched in the nuts? He's like, I'm not getting punched in the nuts, man. And then some dude up front goes, Hey, do I get to come on stage with you and stand next to you? If I get punched in the nuts? And I said, yeah. And he goes, I'll do it, man. That's all it took. Bro. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to the guy. Come on, bro. I got Set love for you. a little higher. Human to human, man. Yeah. I, got, I got love yeah. for you at that level. Like, that's it, man. You got to think about these choices. Go ahead. I I'm sorry. I was thinking the same thing. It's just like, I feel like a dad right now. I like, said son, out loud. I go, that's it? You know better. I go, this. you just want to stand up here? And he goes, yeah. And I looked at the crowd, and I and I turned to the woman. I go, do you want to hit punch someone in the nuts? She goes, yeah. I go, what's your name? And this she, is insane. This is assault. This is amazing. So I said, what's your name? And I, and I forget what her name is. Let's call her Amy. And um, she was Amy. I go, well, you can't punch someone in the nuts with the name Amy. You need to have, like, a wrestling name. That's true. And without missing a beat, she goes, how about Thunderclap? I'm like, get up here. <laughs> yeah, I was like, yeah, 100%. <laughs> Thunderclap. But I go, and I said, I go, is this really... Out loud, I go, is this really about to happen? And the whole crowd starts to go, thunderclap, thunderclap. Oh, my God. It's like an ACDC oh concert. Oh, my God. So That's they, great. They both get up and walk on stage. So I say 
to her. I go, well, you can't punch him from the front because nobody's going to see it. You got to come the up. The Ric Flair. Yeah, you got to do the Ric Flair. The up, up and under, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. She goes, okay. And this is this is what happened. Can you just oh, play God. it real oh, quick? You, oh, God. Is that possible to play it? And see, I made him pull up his pants. Come on, man. Come on. Don't do it. Oh, oh, oh. God. Look at thunderclaps. Oh. Thunderclaps. She's just celebrating in the background and did a And look curtsy. at me laughing in his face. <laughs> she and oh. laughing over his dead carcass. Let me tell you something. She was way, so amazing. The guy who took the nut shot, what's his name? Uh, they, we'll call him Big Bill. Yeah. Big Bill, those shoes are pretty sick, bro. Let me tell you. So he got, he, by the way, he took three shots to the nuts. Oh, Because he kept, he kept saying, how about one more, one more? And then he said one more really after the like third one. And I go, stage. well, now you're starting it hard, dude. So you're going to have to go sit down. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. He just discovered he liked it. He's like, well, here's more. another thing. You ready? Okay, one more time, one more time. <laughs> His girlfriend was in the audience. Oh, no. And I, he goes, I'll do it. She was like, no, 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 no. And he was like, no, I'm going to do it. She's like, no, I'm not worried about you. Don't shame me oh, in the club. Oh, my God. This was so amazing. Josh. I have to tell you that now the night after God. we did a dance off on Saturday night and this dude laid on stage, hung his head off the stage and squirted ketchup into his mouth. <laughs> Freddie. Wait, he did his <laughs> dance hall. Well, yeah, that was one of his dance moves. That's not a dance move. Well, he had just got down on the ground and done some sexy shit and then laid over the, the and just poured. And sprayed condiments in his mouth? Squeezed. It was so crazy. I'm telling you right now. Yeah. I'm telling you right now. Yeah. If I'm at a late show and a guy does it, I'm going to run up and be like, and wreck your show and be like, dude, 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 that's ketchup. Yeah. <laughs> just do shake your ass, man. You wish. He didn't have to do that. He didn't. You encourage it. I didn't. You do. I didn't. You do. I want to tell you who this guy is, and I'm going to forget his name. Simhi, Simni, something like that. He tweeted me earlier that day. Simhi. And Why he, didn't you tweet me? I would have said avoid. Let me, let me just say, he tweeted me earlier. And, and huge respect for this guy. <laughs> the early show. And by the way, everybody who wins a dance off wins their server $50. That's money right there. Okay. That's good. So he tweeted me, and he said, um, Give me one reason why I should come to your show by myself. I can't, I don't have anyone else to go with. I just tweeted back. You'll have fun. He, he did. So when I asked for volunteers, he walked on stage and I looked at him and I recognized his picture and his name. I go, you're that dude. You're Sim. He who tweeted me. He said, that's right. I go, are you here by yourself? He said, I am. And I said, are you having fun? He said, yeah, I'm having fun. I said, you, you came here by yourself tonight. He said, yeah. And I said, and you came up here by yourself just to have fun. He goes, that's Simi, right. Josh was this the dude. headliner. He could have got them to pour alcohol in your mouth instead of ketchup, bro. Uh, he also. Text me, dog. He also Sim did. Sim, he text way, me. He also did that. First, he started hey, drinking people's drinks in the front row. Oh, boy. He just started Sim. throwing them down. Smart and man. then there was no more drinks left. So he started squirting ketchup in his mouth. <laughs> All right. Now I'm really yeah. kind of loving this dude. Dude, he was the He's best. He's like, oh, we're out of liquor. Yeah. Let's go ketchup. Yeah. Sim, he's exactly. kind of my dude. I, I want him in a what bar his name fight was, with me. But oh, amazing. I, was, I called the other guy Big Bill. This is Sim He. I want to just say, and to Thunderclap, and, and Thunderclap to Sim He, too. and to everybody who came on stage, and Big Bill, we're taking your nuts with out. With your giant big balls. Let me just say to everybody. And he flew all the way out here. Who comes in and is sitting behind the booth. <laughs> Let me just say to everybody who comes to my shows. I want to tell you what the staff, all the, every time I leave for a weekend, what the staff says. You have the best fans in the world because they're they, they laugh that's cool they're there to have fun but they're not raucous they're not they're they're not Unless destroying they're over 40 rich white no women they're not drunk. destroying the show y'all are raucous they tip well they tip well they're good to the servers and they're like so the best thing about my fans dude is that this type of stuff with different groups of people could really lead to out of control. Oh yeah, man. But, That's called letting the inmates run the asylum. But they they understand. They You're get dad, it, bro. They, they respect get the dad it. vibe. It's, They're like, I accept your control. Of yeah, this man. But they do, and it's so cool. And then when they don't, when there's one person who doesn't, as a group, they it, it's like Survivor. They vote that motherfucker off <laughs> quick. They, there have been times when my crowds have. Outside of me, been like, hey, you got to get this person out of here. Yeah, he's yeah, ruining yeah. the show for us. I'm like, fine. I'm one of those kind of people. Yeah, man. It, but 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 like, what an I'll amazing be like, hey, man, weekend. His phone's going off. 
I know the movie just started. Yeah. That's a wrap. Yeah, that's it for him. Yeah. Because <laughs> if he's doing it at the beginning, he's yeah. going to be terrible at the end. Yeah. But, man, I got to tell you, so amazing. As usual, my fans just... I can't thank you guys. Philly's enough. a hot town. Hot man. town. I'm when in I, Albany this weekend, by the way. When I worked there for WWE, like the Philly shows, the crowds, because I always pull for the bad guys. Because when I was a kid, they only won on free TV. Yeah. And the good guy would finally win on the pay per view. That's how Vince would get your money. Well, I didn't have money for pay per view, so I always pull for the bad guys because they would cheat and win. I'd be like, "Ma, I didn't follow any rules." She's like, oh, "That's great." But Philly is that how it used to be? Yeah, but Philly fans always root for the bad guy, and yeah. so those are always kind of like my vibes. You know why that mosquito went after me and not you? You're sweet. Got that sweet meat. Yeah. You got that side meat. I got that sweet side meat. You got that meat. sweet side meat, and that side meat is sweeter. You I got after no side the front meat. meat, but usually they would go after that sweet side meat. Well, but there's a lot of front meat, but you want the side meat is tender. You mean a lot of front meat. What are you saying, dude? Well, you've got a whole front of your body is bigger than the side but of you your body. you make it sound like a negative thing, like... Fat ass Freddy or something like that. Take it easy. Fat ass Freddy sounds like a great rap name from the eighties. <laughs> or a garbage tail <laughs> kid. Yeah. We're coming out now, fat ass Freddy. Whoa! <laughs> but it's like eight guys. <laughs> fat ass Freddy. Oh, fat ass Freddy is definitely eight guys. That fool can beat box. And they all spell Freddy a different way. One guy <laughs> spells sucks. it F R E D D I E. He's not even famous I enough e. to, for them to know how to spell no, his name. Yeah, By no. the way, neither was I. Apparently. Everybody always would screw my name up. How can you screw that name up? They either spell it with a Y, like Freddy Krueger. Right, right. Or they spell Prince, Prince, with a C. Did they ever give you, like, a Freddy PH? I wish. That would be so great. Freddy? Oh, I might have to change my Twitter name. I don't mind Freddy. That's really good, yeah. dude. <laughs> That's really good, man. I like Freddy, but, like, with a couple H's. Freddy. It might be okay with just the PH, yeah, son. maybe. Freddy. That's pretty good. I like that. I like it. I like how, <laughs> why do you change your Twitter? Because I notice you change it every now and then. I, I just turn it on. It looks stupid to me, so I just change it to something else. I like Freddy. Then, Fat ass Freddy is not terrible. And then one, and then I'll see it. Like I did one, it only lasted like two days because I was like, that's stupid. Change it to something else. And when I think that one's stupid, I'll change it. I might start changing mine around. Yeah, it, eventually you'll think it sucks, and so will everyone else. And, <laughs> <laughs> um, they probably hate it before you do, but whatever. Let me ask you a question. Ask me a question, but I want to talk about what happened, the debacle of WWE on Sunday. Perfect, and then we'll get into the, I'll send you the thing that we're supposed to read. <laughs> but we but we know these people. They're, we like them already. <laughs> um, it's super professional. Uh, okay, so I have two ideas for my special. What? Okay. I have an hour that I love, that I've, I've done enough times. I don't need to do it anymore. Um, I'll do it a couple more times until I, fil until I film it. You know, just kind of keep it sharp. But, like, you'll see it this weekend in Albany if you come. Well, I can't. Well, but I'm talking to the people who are oh. listening. Um, I know it's confusing because I'm looking at you and I'm talking to them. <laughs> that one was dead on me. <laughs> Like, I was joking, but for a split second, I was like, wait, he knows. <laughs> he knows I can't make that show, right? Go to Albany, New York. I will say, though, everywhere I go, not kidding, everywhere I go, people are like, did you bring Freddie? I'm like, D do you think if Freddie's just going to? If you book a club the same time I'm doing a convention. That's the way we do it. Then we can pull that shit off. Yep. But otherwise, you guys, I got kids. He's got a wife. Like, I got a wife. We both got a life. Like, that's tough. Yeah, that's a good rap, though. I'm going to start with that. Uh, yeah, man. I yeah, yeah. Rap. I got the heart and soul, just not the talent. Well, you know, I could give you the beatbox if you wanted to rap. Your beatbox <gasps> makes my... Oh, man. It sounds like... <gasps> it, it's so consistent, it sounds like you're pushing a button. Well, that's the key to being great at something, man. It's been <gasps> being consistent. That was man. the opposite. <gasps> I kind of breathe in or out. I don't know how you do that. Yeah. I don't can, think I could create that sound without choking. I come close to sucking in this microphone. <laughs> you make everything sound gross. You're just normal but, stuff. Uh, I don't remember what I was talking about. I wasn't talking about WWE. Okay. Do you remember what I was talking about before that? Let me help you out here. Oh, special. Albany, New York. Special. Special. You have an hour you feel good about, but. Okay. That was a setup. So I have the hour. I was like it. I it's like, like it. I'm an opener for you. I have the hour. Suck it, Mark Ellis. Netflix is not going to buy this hour. Netflix doesn't buy a lot of hours. Yes. By the way, I'm, I'm totally. By the way, totally okay with it. Ne okay. Netflix. I don't think I'll take it to one of the other networks. 
because releasing it on YouTube has worked. Worked my last one on YouTube worked so well for me. Yeah, man, it's become a beautiful place for comedians yeah. to show their stuff, man. But there's two things. My my late shows are so unique. Everyone is different, but 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 so cool. Even when no weird things happen, they're so loose and they're so different than anything that anyone has put out. And every single late show, I walk off that stage going, that was the best time I've ever had. Mm-hmm. It's they're usually an hour 20. If you're coming to a late show, you're staying. Just know it's not an hour show. It's an hour 20, hour 30. It is fun. And it's different than anyone's anything anyone has put out as a special. The last half of it, I'm high, but high in control high. Mm -hmm. I was thinking about just doing taping one of those in a club and putting that out because it is putting that out as well. I think you should do both. You think so? Josh, your channel exploded in the last year. Yeah. Okay? It's done great. What people are going to constantly want is new content. I mean, I wouldn't say go as far as saying, dude, you should film all your late shows, but you should make that a more consistent thing. Like, Yeah. Take someone out with you, have them film it, have them film the setup for it when you're in the green room as you walk out and give it a cool presentation, just like the old stand-up shows from the 70s that guys started doing again in the 2000s, right? Mm -hmm. Do your And now they do it big time now again. Do the walkout and then just film the set and then film the crazy shit. The, That's the crazy what I'm saying, set, yeah. Do bo- but I'm saying do both. Do both. Why not? Well, Why be- do one special when you're going to be there a whole weekend? Why not film two and release it when you want? You That's the thing, it. is I would have to really be... I, so you're be, not going to release two videos on the same yeah. day. The only thing that scares me, honestly, is that's two hours of material. I'd, I, that would be gone. Well, I, I don't mind that. I'm, I need to write new material anyways. I was going to say, and you're a storyteller, so you just need shit to happen yeah. in order for you to have a joke. Yeah. It's just happening you're right. every day, baby. You're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. I'm telling you, dude, your channel, and this goes for a lot of you out there, like... My channel's growing small, but I'm telling you, when I see, like, you have three new subscribers, you're getting, like, 3,000, right? When I see, like, you got three new subscribers to get, I get fucking hyped because I want that channel to grow yeah. and build, so I try to stay consistent on it and put out the stuff that I like to do. Your channel's blowing up, and people are going to want more and more and more. That's the good side to fan entitlement. They're hungry for you, dude. They want more food. They want more food. And you'll know what's too much and what's too little, but if you already have a crew out there with you filming your special, why not film the hour 21 as well and just release it six months down yeah, the road? It's a good idea. I'm telling you, dude, your shit is funny. You're a storyteller. It's not just like zingers, which, by the way, I fucking love zingers. But your storytelling is perfect for YouTube because they're not looking for a 10-minute video out of you. They want stories. You're giving them 60 minutes, and then you're going to give them 80 minutes on top of that? That's money, dude. Yeah, 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 yeah. you're right, man. Fucking do it. And comics don't need Netflix anymore. Andrew Schultz is never going to get a Netflix special unless he changes some of his content, which he's not going to do. So he puts it on YouTube. It explodes. Yeah. That's a beautiful space where you can make dough. And eventually people are going to start picking off that and saying, this just got this. Let's see if he wants to do a special with us. Yeah. And then they'll start coming to you. But create your own shit. Make it hot. And people will come to you for business instead of you having to go, hey, do you want to fucking let me shop my special to you? Let them be like, hey, hey, can we shop your special? Hey, San Francisco. This is now an executive decision. San Francisco, I'm here. I'm there at the end of the month. Uh, Friday and Saturday at Cobb's. Oh, uh, you do your special in San Francisco. I am going to it's shoot. A great city. I'm going to shoot both late night shows, and I'm going. If if one of them is what I hope it is, I will release that. Sick. So come out to the shows. That would be that'll be great just, city for just comedy. Deci- yeah, great. Lenny city. Lenny Bruce, Dave Chappelle, my way, pops even rocked it up there. That and that club Cobb's is. I mean, it's it's a massive club. It's huge. But I think we're going to have fun with it. I think that's a great idea, Freddie Prince Jr. Thank you so much. Thanks, man. Yeah, hey, man. by the way, I met your manager the other day. Yeah, he texted me. Yeah, I he, met your manager. He yeah. was super nice. <laughs> yeah, he's a good dude. Yeah, he was yeah. super nice. You I, met him in the grocery store. And I didn't get awkward with him. Or Usually when people are like, they yeah. come up behind me and they put the hand on my shoulder and I get so tight right away. And he said he was your manager so fast, I didn't even have time to freak out. Can I tell you he's something? He's like, hey, man? I'm Josh's man. I was like... 
Oh, hey, hey, oh, hey, man. What's but, up? What's up? Usually I'm like, oh, yeah, nice to meet you. You were? I know. <laughs> I'm so bad at meeting new people. Man. I'm so awkward at it. But I will tell you something, man. For sure, since the time we met to now, you do seem more relaxed. Yeah, you you loosen me up a little, but not too not too much. I mean, no. I still am like whenever I have to meet people, like yeah. Sarah makes me go to crap that I hate sometimes, like and meet people that I've never met that I know don't like me, or at least my brain's already telling me this. My brain's going, you're not going to like them because none of them are play video games or have ever seen a fucking anime in your, their life. So I go, and I'm like, oh, this is going to suck. But sure as shit, none of them fucking like video games, and none of them know what the fuck Golgo 13 is. So I got jack <laughs> shit to talk about them unless they want to talk Lakers, but they don't know shit about the Lakers. No. They just go, oh, Lakers, they're so good, right? What about this? I'm like, thank you. Don't Why know do they what? sound like that? Because they're fake. Because <laughs> they're ooh, fake. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Oh, you know what's funny? Can sorry, I tell you what I love? Sorry, no, sorry. I want to tell you what I love I don't about it that, that much. I, I do, but I want to tell you what I love about that. <laughs> what? Okay. What when <coughs> because I'm the same way. When I make a voice for people that I don't approve of or I don't particularly like, I I'm always the most disrespectful yeah. accent. So voice my voice is always this. If I oh oh oh, right? You yeah. cuz that signifies dumbass. Yeah. The you just went oh, 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 oh. Yeah. like it's just a re- ridiculous human being well the last person that i had to deal with this shit on was from england and was just a dude that i knew what his job was already and yeah. it's not a profession that i respect in any way shape or form hey you might not respect acting right on yeah but don't try to be like a lakers fan where you don't know the starting five yeah. like don't 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 try to do that. Like we got nothing to talk about. There's 40 other people here. There's 40 other people. You tell me there's not one other person that can talk to you about whatever literati fucking stupid book club you're in. I don't give a shit. I want to read the origin of Red Hood and see him stealing hubcaps off the fucking Batmobile and Batman being like, yo, son, about to get fucked up. And Red Hood looking at him like, do something with that same attitude and him being like, hold okay. up, you might be a good Robin. Let's, but nobody wants to talk about that at, at a fucking let's, venture capital meeting. Let, let's, <laughs> um, let's have, I'll be the guy and what? you'll be you. And let's just do a conversation. It's not long. I, I know. That's right? why these people never Are want Are you to coming up to me or am I coming up to I'm you? I'm definitely not coming up to you. Okay. All right. Ready? Are, are you standing with Sarah or is it just you by yourself? I'm with Sarah, but she's talking to two other assholes who okay. I probably don't like, so I'm available. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> you can't do that. Oh, hello, Freddie. Yeah, hey, man, what's up? Good to see you, fellas. Yeah. Sarah's told us a lot about you. No, it's nice to meet you, man. Nice yeah, to meet you. Yeah, so uh, oh, it's, uh, how about them Lakers, huh? Yeah, they're good, man. Are you a Lakers fan? Yeah, I'm a big fan of Magic Johnson. So you've been a fan since the 80s? Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, they played the games there in London in the 80s? Oh, uh, yeah. I'm just a big fan of Catch match. up on YouTube or something? Oh, I like catch up. What dude. kind of stuff are you into? Do you like sculling, that rowboating stuff? You're from England. Is that what you're oh, into? Oh, no. I, I do a lot of... Uh, <clears throat> Oh, a lot of Harry Potter stuff. Yeah, that, yeah. well, actually, if he said yeah. that, I'd be like, yeah, motherfucker. <laughs> Expelliarmus, yeah. let's fucking go, bro. I'll do as you right As soon as I said there. Harry Potter, you were like, that's better than there whatever the go, fuck man. he was talking about. I'll Harry yeah. Potter it up all day, man. I have to tell you, man, and I've told you this before. I'll shoot the Patronus right away, man, right away. Patronus sounds... is no joke. But Patronus, wasn't that a basketball player? No, nah, man. That's Avita Sabonis, Sabonis, yeah. Sabonis, man. <laughs> Avita Yo, Patronus. Shaq made, Shaq made that dude cry in the court. I'm going to tell you something right now. Ar- Arvidas Sabonis. He was shooting threes before. It was cool. Arvidas Sabonis, when you look at clips of him before he injured his legs. And his oh, feet, he was gangster. He was gangster. Yo, he had, By the way, he had a skill set that nobody, I hadn't even seen. Even after his legs were broke, he was still badass. It's just he had to play Shaq a lot. But his passing, like his passing was, he was next he was great. level. He was a great player. Um, I, I know that... Um, I got a sweet ass invitation yesterday or two days ago from Jeff Dye to join you guys yeah, at his man. house. I fell asleep like an old man. In front you should have come, man. Dude, Why I, didn't you come? I bro? fell asleep. I, I texted him. I go, I just landed. I'm going uh, home. Ah, you're beat down. I went man. home. I'm going home to nap. And then I fell asleep like my dad, man. Nah, dude, you're working all weekend doing late shows, man. You got to get your beauty sleep. You missed out, though, man. Like the pay per view, we went to watch Hell in a Cell at Jeff Dye's house. Yeah. We explain and to people what Hell in a Cell is. Hell in a Cell is a pay-per-view that WWE does every year. Sometimes they get rid of it, but it's back now. They stole the TNA paint job, which is hysterical because they're super original. 
And the main event was Bray Wyatt versus Seth Rollins. Bray Wyatt as his new character, The Fiend, which is the scary clown By the way, guy. I, I love that name. By the way, he's great. Bray is great. He could, you could give him any character. His dad was IRS, the old... The old oh, wrestler yeah, from the 80s. Like, you could, you could literally be like, you have to be IRS. And he would find a way to get it over. Like, right. he just gets it. He knows how to act. His work is awesome. He's just had some injuries that have put a couple speed bumps in his career. They gave him the belt once. He got hurt. They had to take it away and put it on someone else. Otherwise, I think it would have lasted longer. But it's difficult to represent the WWE when you're a bad guy in a publicly traded company. That's why Cena was always the good guy and Vince would never trade him. So they put him in a storyline with Seth Rollins, who's sort of the new face of the of the franchise, mm-hmm. so to speak, right? He's the one, if you have kids, you'll know this, every WWE commercial, it's him or The Miz going, hey, buy our crap, here we go, they body slam, they smash, oh, you beat Seth Rollins, how could you beat me? So he's that guy now, he's the new John Cena. So anybody that was gonna face him in that match, you had to know was gonna lose. So they just built up this amazing new character, Bray Wyatt, the fiend, and he does like a Pee Wee's Playhouse where it's like, hey, we want to sing with you. Then, And it's like all good. And he's like, hi, everybody. I'm Bray. You're my best friend. And it's money. And then the lights get kind of creepy. And he's like, oops, sorry, kind of got silly for a second. And then he just slowly goes insane. And he becomes this character called I love The that. Fiend. E- everyone does. And right in tune with the release of The Joker. Uh, and he was even doing this before you even knew there was a Joker movie being made. Like, this was just him being inspired by some... He probably saw killer clowns in outer space and was like, I'm going to make that mask scary again. And just and pulled it off because he's that friggin' good. Okay, he's just that good. And he writes a lot of his own stuff. Not all of it. A lot is Bruce Pritchard, who's back with the company now. But Bray's a talented dude and has the capacity to write for himself. So they create this great character. There's no reason for you to put him in that match unless he's going to win. It's his first title match as this new character who is all about just destroying people they make it look like a horror movie they even change the lights they turn them out they turn them on he's got he does the mandible claw like mankind used to do to like you know jack up your tongue and guys do blood pellets and blood yeah yeah yeah. so that's like scary and great and they put him in this match they light the arena red through the whole match okay which i don't agree with the choice but that's just a creative choice um the cage was already red you didn't need it but anyway and if you disagree right on um, they do the match, and it gets to the point where no matter what Seth does in a no disqualification match, which is what Hell in a Cell is, he can't keep this dude down. He hits him with a steel chair. He hits him with another steel chair. He hits him with 37 steel chairs. He hits him with a ladder. He hits him with 40 ladders. He smashes his face into the cage. No matter what he does, his finisher, the curb stomp, like 43 times, and Bray Wyatt oh, up again because he's a monster. It's freaking Seth out. Seth's like, what do I got to do to beat this guy? This guy's crazy. Smashes him with another chair, tries to pin him. Guy gets up on a one count. What? Oh, my God, he's a monster. And I get it. It's for kids, right on. Cool. Sell, sell, you know, rings and action figures and all that stuff. And you need them to be scared of this guy. He's legit. Wow, maybe they're going to let him win. They, I know they won't, but I'm thinking, that well, maybe they will. They're not going to just kill the character. And so then Seth goes and grabs a sledgehammer, right? It's a no disqualification match. He's like, I'm going to have to hit him with the sledgehammer. Something that Triple H did and made his career on, smashing people with sledgehammers. He's got to beat Triple H. Now he's got the sledgehammer. Mm-hmm. He's got the hammer. He's about to, you know, beat his monster. And the referee goes, no, I can't let you do it. He's like, no, get off me, man. He's like, no, think about what you're doing. No, no, I don't want to think anymore. I'm going to smash this guy. And they're not saying this, but this is what they're trying to convey, right? right? He's like, no, no, you're still a human being. Keep your humanity. He's like, okay, all right. No, I can't keep my humanity. Smash. Hits him with the sledgehammer. Referee calls a match. Match is over. Now, all this shit has been going on for about eight minutes. For eight minutes, the crowd's booing. The whole time. Why are they booing? Because it's horrible. Which part? The match. Why? Because the ending sucks. He's kicked out of 27 finishers. They called a DQ finish to a match that doesn't have a disqualification stipulation. Oh, the, 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 the fans are booing because none of his moves were working. Because nothing made sense. They were booing because creatively the match just didn't e- freaking explain. work. Because as somebody who doesn't watch, the fact that you can't beat this guy makes sense. No, everybody knew that Seth was going to win. Right. And that's why they were pissed. 
And so it's just a matter of time. And then when you call a match, a DQ, and there's no finish, there's no finish. The champ doesn't lose his belt. It's, an, it's, a, it's a no contest is basically what the ref called it. Everybody's sitting there like, what? What? We don't even get to see a pinfall? And I know the WWE's philosophy is, well, Bray didn't lose, so it didn't weaken him. And Seth didn't lose, so he's still our champ. But it weakened him. And then they did this whole thing after where Bray breaks out of the cage and beats him up and gets blood to come out of his mouth. And the crowd's booing the whole time for really? over 10 minutes. For over 10 minutes, screaming, we want refunds, clap, 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 clap. We want refunds, clap, 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 clap. I don't it, even understand. I'm not understanding look, the how. Whole, look, the whole show outside of Becky Lynch and Sasha Banks was a pretty bad pay-per-view. Like, those two women opened it. They're sick. The only reason Sasha Banks isn't the champion right now is because she's not as good on the microphone as Becky and by, by a lot. There's right. a big gap there. But her work is second to none. Like in-ring work, wrestling, they were in the cell as well. They were doing amazing shit I've only seen in Japan and like top guys do that Vince allows and now they're allowed to do it. And it was violent and awesome and beautiful and artistic and creative. But that started the show. Now, every match after that has to follow, and they just couldn't keep up. They got the belts on the right women. Becky has the belt, and Charlotte has the belt, our Charlotte. Yeah. She beat Bailey. Bailey's not that good on the mic. And now they're she's like for the kids. She's a feel good. She has balloons behind her. And now they're turning her character in this like bitter girl that just doesn't match with who she is. Mm -hmm. So they had to get the belt off her. I don't know what they're gonna do with her character. They just wasted it or killed it. But Charlotte has the belt. She'll keep that for a while. And now Becky has the belt, and they're going to set up, I think, a good round with her and I told you my favorite, Asuka, the yeah. Japanese one, yeah. in which Asuka will have to lose because they'll want to keep Becky strong. And then that'll set Becky up for Alexa Bliss, who's the best talker on the mic, probably third best out of men and women, but the best actor who's on the mic. Who's the best, Miz? No, but he's up there. I mean, you could say Samoa Joe, Miz... And then Alexa, I mean, it's that, I mean, she's that good on the mic. Like she, her ratings on her segments when she was just talking on a talk show, on a wrestling show, when she was hurt, were getting higher ratings than the actual wrestling matches after that. That's crazy. So she knows how to get a, whether it's a baby face or a heel, like she knows how to get her personality over. So Becky will win, which will set her a big time for Alexa. Alexa and uh, her tag team partner, this crazy Scottish chick named Nikki Cross, they'll break up. And then Alexa, I think, will become champion again. I, I That's guess, my prediction for the next year. Y'all can hold me to that. I guess. Receipts. Um, receipts, Freddie. <laughs> That's what everyone says now. Receipts. I really, um, I'm but not it was a doo -doo, doo -doo show. I'm not sure people understand how good athletes these people are. Yeah, uh, Becky and Sasha are so cut. It's like Bruce Lee but cut. Not Bruce Lee too, cut. But athletes. Yeah, but I'm saying, like, they work yeah. out like fiends now. It's not like the old days. I still wish the stronger, bigger women would get more love, but they've been getting hurt lately, so I don't think that's the company's fault. But uh, the w women's wrestling is 10 times men's wrestling right now. Like, it's way better. I would prefer to, same way I prefer women's tennis over men's tennis. Like, women's wrestling is just better. There's more passion. They're getting more... They're getting allowed to do more stuff because the ratings are warranting yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so they're just getting to tell better stories. And there's not as many of them, although it's about to be too crowded. So people aren't losing stories as quickly. Whereas in the men's division, you have one bad match, at least when I worked there, and that was it for your storyline for the rest of the year. And it's like, so, okay, now he's just a guy that's going to lose six times in the next six weeks. Okay, great. Thanks. So, you know what I mean? It, yeah. could, it, it was it was tricky working there and and managing egos and all that stuff. But the I women don't have imagine. to deal with all of that yet. But it'll come. It'll come. Um, Listen, before we go any further. We got a read? We do have a read. Lay it on me. And it's a way. read that we've had before. So let me just go ahead and just. What we got? Bef before you read into hey. it, let me just tell you how much I like this product. Guys, you guys know that I like myself a shoe. You guys know how much I like boots and sneakers. Thursday boots. First of all, they look fly as fuck. It looks so cool. They look like very expensive boots. They feel like very expensive boots. You know where they don't feel like expensive boots? When you see your credit card statement. You're like, that's all I pay for those motherfuckers? These, but guys... 
you know that I like to, even when I dress up, I still like to be, uh, I don't like to, here's what I like to look like. I like to look like I'm trying, not trying, but I'm dressing up, but I'm not trying too hard. Do you know what I mean? There's that balance right in between. I know what you're talking about. (laughs) There's that balance right in between. And these boots for me, guys, are the perfect balance where you can go and dress up and wear these boots, or you can go and just walk down the street, regular Thursday boots. They walk that line, and it's the perfect boot for me. Super comfortable, not too expensive. Mm -hmm. This is the way to go, guys. Thursday boots. Just hop on that website. I'm telling you right now, if you don't see a pair of shoes you don't like, you ain't looking. Today, our show is brought to you by the good people at Thursday Boot Company, a bootstrapped startup that makes the best handcrafted boots and sells them direct to consumer at some of the lowest markups in the footwear industry. Thursday Boots' tagline is highest quality, honest prices, because they use some of the best materials like full-grain leather, supple glove leather lining, and gold standard Goodyear welt construction. Just like the legacy brands that charge $400 and more for similar styles, Thursday Boot Company sells their boots at prices starting at just $149 with free shipping and returns. Go get you some. It always surprises everyone how low their prices are compared so to other leather boots. That's actually true. I got to yeah. use my real voice for a minute. I got another boots that look just like them. $1,200. Yeah. <laughs> and I paid for them happily. Yeah. So, And those are my presidents that Thursday makes. So if you want to wear the same kind of sick boots your boy wears, get the presidentials. Also... More importantly, they've gotten over 20,000 five-star reviews, two of them right here, from real customers. So you know they must be doing something right. These are handcrafted with the highest quality materials to be comfortable, versatile, and durable. You can wear them with slacks. You can wear them with jeans. You can wear them with shorts if you're crazy and just trying to express yourself. Thursday boots are perfect for people who understand quality and don't want to pay a high retail markup for great for a great-looking pair of boots that are built to last. So, with prices starting at $149 and free shipping returns, Thursday boots are the best buy this winter. And with their clean, timeless design and durability, Thursday boots will keep you standing confident for years to come. There is no promo code. It's the first time we don't have one because their prices are legit $800 than some of the other competitors out there. So, head on over to thursdayboots.com. That's thursdayboots, just how it's spelled, .com, and try a pair today with free shipping and free returns if you don't like them. If for any reason you don't like them, if for any reason the size doesn't fit, Thursday Boots has you covered, so you got to go to thursdayboots.com. That's T-H-U-R-S-D-A-Y-B-O-O-T-S.com and get a pair of high-quality boots you'll be wearing for years. They're so dope, guys. Go get yourself some Thursday Boots. Now, I want to talk to you about one last thing. <coughs> So, you know, I'm a big, uh, one last thing. I'm a big, obviously. A this big. should be a new segment. One, one last, last thing, thing with Josh. Bing. I'm a, obviously a huge NFL fan and yeah. just like everybody else captivated and super curious going into this season, what would happen with the Browns and Baker Mayfield. It's kind of happened around the way I thought it would. Yeah. ESPN uh, sold him like it was going to yeah, be something special. But, you know, with the combination of him having zero experience, the head coach, Listen, that dude is not equipped to be a head coach. Yo, I'm not trying to be a jerk. But, but he com- should be a fry cook at compared a diner. To, compared to other nah, he's coaches. Not ready. He's not ready. That guy's a bum. He's not ready. Compared to other coaches. Not ready. Compared to me, he's a genius, genius. in football. Compared to the coaches around him, he's a not ready. bum. Not ready. And here's what I would say about Baker Mayfield going in. Interesting to me. How's this kid going to win? But, given but, the circumstances they put him in. But, but, but not only that, Freddie. The circumstances he puts himself in. I can't remember. He has to run. Yeah, not. It's not that. Who he is, his who am I? Being brash, talking out at people. Other, you know, the one thing about a leader on your team, the quarterbacks, you don't see a lot of that behavior. You just don't. You see it out of the wide receivers, the defensive yeah, backs, because there's an expectation placed upon your them. quarterback needs to be steady, Freddie, with a ph. You know what I'm saying? And and doesn't because here's what's happened. Baker Mayfield, who he is, his brashness, also the way ESPN built him up, has put a a bullseye on his back. Everybody wants this motherfucker. Everybody okay. does. Well, hold, hold on, because there's a couple reasons be- uh, but, behind. The- okay, go ahead. And go let ahead. me just say this. And, and, and so, so I'm really curious. Like, and I actually don't mind him. I don't mind his brashness, but I think before you get so brash, do something. Okay. Do something. Let me tell you what he's done. Nothing. Okay. This kid was a walk-on 
at oh, two different colleges. Hundred percent. No one has. Well, these are things he's done, and not you can't in the NFL just, though. You can't just dismiss it though. That how do you think he got there? That's no a, doubt. You have to you have to accept the process if you're going to present the final result as any sort of as. So you're saying what has he done? I'm telling you what he's done so far, and it'll explain why he is who he is a little bit. Maybe it won't. Maybe I'm shitty at this. He was a walk on at two different schools. Okay, he became a stud even though he didn't have 100 any of the quarterback things that you want made it to the nfl had a pretty good run at the end of last season when they focused on protecting him and allowing that pocket to move a little bit right so this year the man that was responsible for those last few games and that philosophy is gone they got rid of him he was the offensive coordinator yeah and they bring in this jackass who literally two weeks ago couldn't manage the clock and call plays at the same time by the way the, the play calling for them is horrific it's a joke it's horrific. a joke horrific. because it's too much horrific. too soon it's just like a young actor it's too much too soon when they become uber famous too fast it just doesn't work out he has no offensive line zero no, none zero so he has to run and he's the slowest guy on the field he runs a 4 8 40. Yep. Okay. He's, now, he's elusive, but he's not fast. Now, last night, a lot of that target was because there was a Bosa on the field. And that Bosa was the same Bosa that in yeah, college, yeah, man. Connor, or Connor, uh, Baker stabbed the flag in yep. the center of the ground. So he had that coming, right? But it's that brash attitude that got him to the NFL, that got him to be the number one pick. And I'll question the leadership because every player that's played with him says he's a leader mm -hmm. and says they'd follow him into war. Mm -hmm. Now, all those players asked are players that a lot of people in the media would deem knuckleheads, right? Like Odell Beck and these guys. But And they, he says things like, keep doubting him, keep doing this, keep doing that. He thrives on that. Now, I agree with everything you said as far as that's not going to win it in the NFL. You have to be steady Freddie, as you said it. Yeah. And he's not that. But... To think he's ever going to be that, I think, is a mistake. And to think to coach him in that direction is a mistake. Let him be him and just see what happens. Yes. And just see what happens. But you got to protect him because if, yeah. if a guy who can't see over the offensive line can't move side to side, yeah. then he's dead. And that's who you drafted, knowingly, willingly, yes. wantingly. So you got to have a line that can move. I think we're talking about two different things because I agree with you 100%. But, like, for me... Um, you're, you're not dealing with kids anymore in college. You're dealing with grown men. Mm -hmm. And not only that grown men who watch this dude, but he's still a kid. Yep. Who watch this dude play half a season. And this is real. Watch this dude play half a season, get crowned by the NFL, be on every fucking commercial. And these are some grown men and be like, okay. Oh, Do yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah like, I so you so I think that all builds up. And when all that is against you, Right. And he already has people fucking lining up to take his head off. You and you haven't done anything yet in the pros. Yeah. To me, wait, wait, don't get in a back and forth with Rob Ryan. What good he does can't that help do? Himself. I know he can't. That's what motivates him to play. He can't help himself. And he doesn't have the 30 years of life experience to know better. Like, he is who he is, so you have to... By the way, I like him. Yeah, you have to like direct him. that yep. energy. You can't change that energy, right? Like I You agree. can only direct it, and the only way to direct it, if you know it fuels him, is to protect this dude because otherwise he's going to make rash, bad decisions every time he's under pressure Yes, because he doesn't have any other option. The, it's either sack or I'm going for it all. He needs a leader as a coach, not a sycophant. Not a guy and, who has... And he's a fan. Freddie Kitchens is a fan of Baker Mayfield. So he doesn't need a fan. He needs a guy to be like, hey, man. He needs an old dude. He needs an old, He yeah. needs a Coughlin or a Belichick to go, hey, man, you're going to be you, but fucking you better be you after we start well, a winning. a coach like that is John Gruden, right? Like, I'm not going to change a fucking thing about you, but you're getting the ball out in two and a half seconds. Yes. You're getting the ball out in two. Derek Carr's throwing the ball in literally faster than he's ever thrown it in his entire career as far as time he's holding the ball. I think how, it's just under two and a half how seconds. How happy was Gruden after he beat the Bears? You know he was oh. happy. <laughs> Although I will say this. I never yeah. count the London game as a real Maybe game because I know at least – half of one team is going to be completely jet lagged, annihilated and phoning it in. So with Baker Mayfield in mind, 
And because he's a guy and I love generally a polarizing. Yes. I generally really like polarizing sports figures. I usually fall on the side of, of somebody who likes them yeah. I just, because I, I look past. Um, I honestly, like I, a lot of times I look past the hijinks and I just like the, what the emotion that they generate. Yeah. But they're usually considered like the bad guy. Yes. Yeah. So let, I, I thought a fun, um, uh, Rushmore. Mount Rushmore would be our favorite people to hate in sports. Yeah. Now I have a top one that could fill all four spots. But I'll I'll just leave him at number one. We and by the way, everybody else is such a distant second. All right, all right, all right. Alex Rodriguez. Oh yeah, well. Listen, man. Anybody who's got a painting of himself as a centaur <laughs> in his house is a fucking dummy. White Goodman wrestled one in dodgeball. That I like one was that. Cool. That was good. That one was nice. But he didn't he didn't paint the picture and put it in his house. Like a fucking dummy. Not only that, this dude, listen, here's how you can tell, man, when he, somebody's liked. You remember when he was getting dragged through the mud and being taken to court? Oh, we're, I, we're about to deep dive this because I've seen the Screwball documentary about 30 times. Man, what a great documentary. You know what's telling to me? Not one of his guys were like, nah, man, he's a great dude. No. Nobody showed up to court with that motherfucker. He was on his own. And let me just say this. I still hate him as an analyst. Now we're just supposed to forget what a bitch this guy was. I fuck him. Don't argue any of that. He's never even like beaten my team in a way that would hurt because there's no rivalry between the Dodgers yeah. and Yankees, but he's my number one too. And I saw that documentary. By, by, by the way, I guess if you haven't seen that documentary, Screwball by Billy Corbin, oh, the same guy that God. did Cocaine Cowboys. And it is, he talks to everyone but Alex. <laughs> Because it is all about Alex. <laughs> yeah, man. Yo. Yeah. This dude, not only did he cheat and he found the doctor that Manny Ramirez was using, this guy, Dr. Bosch, they called him. And uh, my shout out, Manny Ramirez. Thank you for that 2004 World Series. Go ahead. There you go. Yeah. I love Manny. Me too. Um, I don't care if guys. Because he's steroids. a knucklehead. I don't care if Either do I. athletes do steroids. I just neither. don't care. Me either. Um, I'm sure a few wrestlers do. I like them too. A few. And by the way, um, all your favorite actors? Yeah, they do too. So <laughs> Yeah, the good looking ones who are 60, you're like, that too. Yeah, like it's okay. Yeah, like yeah, it's yeah. science, man. Whatever. So uh, so anyway, he he finds this doctor, Dr. Anthony Bosch, brings him to a hotel, says, I want you to give me what you gave Manny. Even though Manny's just pop, right? He still just wants the steroids. So then he says, I want exclusivity, because he doesn't want anybody else to be able to have access. To his steroids, basically, right? So if, I think he says for two hundred fifty thousand, I'll give you exclusivity. Um, so they make a deal. When all this goes down, okay, it all gets broken up by this one guy who was owed four thousand dollars, just wasn't gonna get screwed, and so he brought this whole house of cards down. It, it, it's a crazy story. It's crazy. But the grossest thing was when the press got a hold of it, and they put Alex's name. Alex directed his people to release other baseball players' names that were in the book that he purchased for $10,000 that had all this doctor's uh, pro athlete's names. So not only did he put Ryan Braun's laundry out there, he put his own catcher on the Yankees at the time, Francisco Cervelli, who's only making the league minimum, the league minimum, taking steroids to try to improve his career and to sidestep heat, throws his own player under the bus. That wasn't investigative reporting. That was Alex wanting to being defuse and being a bitch and throwing his own guys under the bus just to take some heat off him. He may be the worst human in sports, not because he took steroids, but just like, yo, be accountable. If you're going to cheat, cheat but if you get caught be accountable don't be a ryan braun punk bitch throwing some other guy's lance career armstrong. under the fucking bus like just be like all right you got me lance armstrong's like all he had to say is you got me i raised a bazillion dollars for street yeah. for cancer like and everybody would be like oh fuck well you're out but yeah that was good too it's so but instead, crazy to like, me they just how much to we vilify people who take peds it's, it's so weird. it's so weird people cheat in every sport and who cares and if I, I just don't, and who cares? I just don't. I've never understood it. I, you know what? I bet you people wouldn't want to watch 
sports leagues without PEDs. Because you know what? <laughs> it wouldn't be as fun. Well, the argument is, well, they existed before without PEDs. Yeah, but they weren't as fat. I'm telling you right now. I'm agreeing with the you. The reason the NFL doesn't come down hard on it is because their players need HGH. They need recovery help. Yeah, man. They, That's they're why they so only suspend them three yeah, games. Yeah, man. They're <laughs> so much faster and stronger than they were before. They need that recovery help. And one of the reasons they're faster and stronger is because they're taking drugs. Yeah. But, 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 listen, guys, you know, you know how people generally look when they hit 35? Yeah, that thus begins the death cycle. Yeah. <laughs> Not that I just got even buffering. Yeah. Oh, I'm vegan now. Like, yeah. Bro, Listen. you're vegan because you're eating steroids yeah, instead man. of meat. <laughs> Listen, is, what happened to those titties you had last year? Yo, man, it's it. Look, it steroids are rampant, but I legit, I have zero issue with what you choose to put in your body to make you feel good. Yeah. If you want to get breast implants? Cool. If you're a dude, you want to get calf implants? Cool. You want to do a nip tuck? Cool. I'm you all don't, for whatever. Cool. Yeah. You don't like the gray beard that Josh and I have and you want to have yours brown? Rock it brown, baby. I ain't judging you. I just give less a fuck. So mine's gray. Yeah. But if I did care a little more, that shit would be brown. That it, It's so crazy to me that, like, when my hair go, people, well, she got fake tits. Who, why? Who, why do you care? Like, what do you care? You ain't you care. squeezing them? Yeah. Like, they ain't for you. Let them be as big as they're hers. Yeah. She wants to have, you know, Gigantic. two balloons or oranges, whatever, yeah, It man. doesn't matter to me. I don't care. Listen, you wait until I get I get those butt implants. Get them, bro. I'll, I mean, I'll smack Yo, it. Yo, I'm going to get that high Steve Harvey ass. Where you could put, like, yeah. the, two bottles of water on it, one where, on each You know, cheek. where where I'm wearing you know, <laughs> a, a tux that have tails, and the tails go out and then over. I will put a martini shaker on your booty <laughs> and make you shake my martini. Yo, did we talk about this? We already talked about it. If you we were gonna, did not talk about you shaking your ass. No, if me. you were going to get... If you were going to get surgery on one part of your body, oh. did we? I think we did that. No, I don't think we did. All right. Well, ne we next did. week, we'll do our top four. Can it be like make-believe shit, like a body augmentation? 100%. Oh, then I got 100%. some good shit. Okay. Bro, so I play role-play games like cyberpunk and shit. I come up with some sweet body augmentation. My second player that I love to hate. Yeah. And by the way. Oh, yeah. I forgot what we're doing. I love him. I, there's so many things I love him. I love about him. Uh -huh. I mean, dude. Love, but love to hate playing Kobe. Oh, yeah. Dude. Okay. And, and, and here's a couple of things, guys. Let me just say this. Everybody hates him. I Kobe. love his attitude. I love his step on your neck. It's because you're a winner. I love all of that. You respect winners. I do respect him, man. But there was nobody that I loved to hate yeah. more. Where, than like, Kobe. when he bricked it in a crucial moment, oh you're like, yeah, my fuck fucking you. I know God. you guys. But I'm going to tell you something right now. I watch a lot of games at this uh, this Boston sports pub on Wilshire and 26. Is that Sonny? Sonny McClain. So you can yeah. say the name. And yeah. You all see me there. You can talk shit. And all the Boston fans, anytime Kobe would miss, they'd be like, Fuck you. Yeah, dude, let me just yeah, tell you change your number again, you <laughs> fucking soft. Like, just There's brutal. nobody in in the history of sports that I can remember watching yeah. who has a higher tolerance for pain. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, might be the toughest motherfucker. Yo, you know how you see people get carried off the court when yeah. they snap their Achilles? And he just stood there and shot two free throws? Well, he had two free throws to shoot. That's what Kobe Bryant does. You've seen those things that happens to his fingers, yeah. and then he just starts shooting still? He has a responsibility to the team to shoot. If he was on my team, I would have loved him more than maybe any sports player I have. Like if he was on my team, I could, outside of maybe Brady, the two of them, like he's above, hard to say he's above Big Poppy, but up there yeah. because of what he how much he gave but as an opposing fan fuck that guy i feel you so number two for me kobe bryant my number two is an entire organization oh i love this dude um really yeah because it's it's not just the players that i hate it's the front office as well and the fans and the fans are super gross um so it's the st louis cardinals uh i think the fans Oh, they're yeah. I don't like the fans. Their their shit talk is so weak. It is weak. It's, it's just because they're so nice. I guess yeah, they're, they're so not nice. nice on my timeline when they play the Dodgers. <laughs> but their shit talk is so bad. Yeah, yeah. They cheat to win. They're, they do more steal signing than anything. They even steal records of minor league teams from the Astros and got busted by the federal government. And they busted our ass so many times. And I 
hate it. I hate I still remember the one win Jose Lima got on him when they oh, swept us yeah. over a decade ago. Yeah. And I was at the game in our suite screaming, it's Lima time, you bitches. Like, who screams it's Lima time except him? Like, I hate them. Yeah. I hate them so much. Like, there's just nothing. Ozzy Smith, I'd give love to if I saw him. And maybe... Maybe Bob Gibson because he pitched before I was alive, so there's no reason to hate him. But outside of those two, if Willie McGee was like, hey, man, could my kids get an autograph? I'd be like, why don't you go to hell, Willie McGee? Yeah. Why don't you play center field, and I'll throw it to you way out there. Let's see if you catch it. I hate the Cardinals. Why? hate. They literally have single-handedly damaged the legacy of Clayton Kershaw. That organization yeah. single-handedly now, you can blame Clayton for it, but a lot of times he was getting screwed, man. They're stealing signs. That's bullshit. Wow. I, so I don't like him. Okay, I like that. I like that. Now, listen. If you're a Cardinals fan, you're blocked. There's, you're blocked. There are some people who think that I would put Eli Manning on this list. No, nah, he only got you one time, two times. Twice. But I don't because... He's got so many more than he does. Yeah, and like the only thing that bothers me about Eli is that I think he's an average quarterback and it bothers me i wish he was better because then i could be like oh yeah we lost eli manning twice but now i'm like we lost to, to that guy from lenny from of mice of men Off twice of yes catch oh <laughs> drives me fucking crazy yeah, yeah okay this next guy is not a well-known dude and if he was on my team i would love him i consider him you know my buddy kevin euclid who used to pay yeah the i consider him the uke of the yankees his name is brett gardner Man, that scrappy little motherfucker. He's he's good, man. That's why I hate him. He looks like Elmer Fudd. I, I listen. He fouls off eighty thousand pitches every yeah. bat. Just like your just like your manager used to do. Oh, uh, Joey Cora. Yeah, man. Alex Cora. Man. Alex Cora. His dad was. Doing. I fuck Brett Gardner to me. Jacob and I will watch a Red Sox I'm Yankee surprised. game. That seems so random. We'll watch a Red Sox Yankee game, and as soon as they come up, we're like, "Fuck!" And now I'm telling you right now because you know he's a grinder. Grinder. No easy outs. No, and. Kevin, I tweeted something out about him last year, and you tweeted me. He was like, what's the fucking, he's a great guy. I'm like, I bet he he's is. He's a great guy. I go, I bet he is. And just like you're a great guy, but he's somebody I love to hate. And I bet you he's a great dude. And when I say hate, guys. It's fan hate. Yeah. It's fan I'm hate. I'm sure it's he's not a great guy. Hate. But Brett Gardner and his little fucking slappy singles to left field. And by the way, I love everybody in St. Louis. It's just fan hate. Yeah, but f fuck Brett Gardner. That's yeah, that's go. my, that's that is with Eight Fs. Fuck that guy. All right, my third one is easy. I'm a recovering Raiders fan. Yeah. And he's Tom Brady. And that pass was bullshit. Mm. That call was bullshit. Mm. The tuck rule was bullshit. Mm -hmm. And that, even as a recovering Raiders fan, is way more. If just that moment existed, that's a reason enough to hate on a man that's on Team Handsome, that I that I acknowledge is on Team Handsome. But I can still hate him. Maybe the correct hate would be directed towards the ignorant referees mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that weren't equipped to make a crucial call because mm -hmm. their training is, is soft and they're the worst officiates in all of sports, soccer, basketball, hockey, all that. They're the worst. Even ba umpires that don't get balls and strikes right are still more efficient than NFL referees. And that's not all their fault. The rules get changed every year, but they don't have to suck at calling the rules every single year. Mm -hmm. And in that game, that was probably the worst travesty that and the Seattle um, Green Bay pass interference call yeah. that they did. Those are probably the two worst calls in my lifetime that I've ever seen. And one of them came against my guys when we were stacked and ready. So that hate is warranted. And uh, fuck you, Tom. There you go. Hey, Tom Brady, I love you. and uh, I got big love for you, dog, yeah. and I wish your family well, but that's a big F you for me to you. Listen, man, if, you're, if you ever wanted to send me a selfie, just you smiling or something, that'd be great. That's weird. Uh, weird, but awesome. More weird, Listen, though. Listen, if you ever want to FaceTime and just, you know, say hi real quick, I would, I would love to do that. So, <laughs> so, here we go. You just have to live with that. You ready? For, oh, I'm yeah, living. I got my four. I know you got your Floyd four. Floyd Mayweather. Yeah. Hard for me to get past this dude. He may be a guy. Look, I don't know anyone personally, but he may be the one guy on the list where I'm like, I don't know 
if I like him personally. I get that. I either. mean, he's he's abused women. He's I mean, he's punched women in the face. He hasn't, you know, exactly presented himself as a decent guy. There's a strong argument there. Yeah, yeah. I will say this, Not man. I'm a big fan of his myself. He plays his role to a fucking he he knows who he is in the public eye. Yeah. And 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 he has played that role almost to perfection. Like as a heel, come on. He, he listen, I'll give him credit for this. He created the show 24-7 on HBO. That was his idea. Was that right? Yeah. And the first one they ever did, I think, was for his fight against I'm gonna say Oscar, but I'm wrong on that. Um, but that was his show that he created, that he pushed. And it was his narrative to be the villain in that. Now, I don't know if that was his advisors telling him or his idea, but uh, he certainly sells that. But I'm no fan of Floyd. Um, personally, I hate his fighting style. Ever since he hurt his hands against Charmbe Mitchell, he stopped wanting to knock guys out. He knocked Ricky Hatton out. Is that what happened? Yeah, he kept getting lidocaine shots in his hands because they were breaking all the time. So he doesn't go for knockouts anymore because his they hands are jacked up. Is it a combination of just how your bone structure and how quick, how fast? I mean, his, just the speed must have his something job to do with it. His job is punching with his hands. Right. So, uh, you know, you hit the heavy bag enough times, not even a body. You're going to break things here and there, and then two days later be doing it again. So his hands got more brittle, and that created more of his uh, his less aggressive, more strictly counter-punching, making you look bad. But that style got really boring really fast. Yes. And I tuned out quick. Like, he went through some guys that he outweighed, buy a lot and would pay them more money to come out of their weight class, like Gaddy and those cats. Um, but he was better than them anyway. But I just didn't like his style, his management, and the fights he picked. Same with Oscar in the later part of his career. I was very critical of him. I didn't like that he would pick guys that just lost, and then he would fight them the day they were eligible yeah. to fight again after getting knocked out, or they just had a 12-round war. Like, yo, you don't want to fight Corte after he knocked that fool out in seven? You going to wait till he has 12 round? Like, that's cold. I don't like that style. Yeah. So, you know, I, there was a lot of that that I didn't like with Floyd, too. So I get that. So, get yeah, that. yeah, Floyd for me is is on there. Um, I don't generally dislike fighters. I, that's hard. I don't because they're it, doing things. And it touches your gladiator yeah, spirit. Yeah, yeah, it really does. It really does. It does. But this guy... I know men and, and I respect way, are like, I look past, I separate the yeah. fighter from the man. I'm like, man, I don't know if I can do that. Dude, but some people This can. guy, genius as to how he marketed himself. And yeah. it made him a gazillion dollars. And I think he also knew people are going to buy pay-per-view in hopes that I lose. That's WWE 101. In hopes that man. I lose. In hopes yeah. that I lose. Yeah, they pay to see him lose. I think more people bought to see him lose than to see him win. A hundred percent, yes. Yeah. And he made a fortune off that. So yeah. I, let me just say this. I just want to, on my list, genius at what he did, on my list, though, is he's he's close second behind A-Rod. I feel you. All right, my last one I think everybody will love. I think it'll make you go, oh, shit, and people go, well, you already oh. had Tom Brady on there, which is, I mean, you're the only person in America who doesn't like him. Ooh, huh. Okay, so my last one, this is 80s. Oh! All right, and. Oh, oh, tell me the sport. Maybe I can guess. Basketball. Larry Bird. No, no, no. no. I got love. He did it behind the back. Isaiah Magic Thomas. Johnson. You're on the right team. Oh, Bill Lambeer. Bill <laughs> Lambeer. Once, yeah, he once should be I on my saw list too, yeah. that ESPN documentary they did. He didn't make himself any more likable. Yo, he doubled down. I know. Hey, you're in my paint. That's my space. Yeah. Tap, tap. That's you go to sleep. That's it. Like he was so even he was more evil in the documentary because there was no like remorse whatsoever. And I literally was just looking at him like, dude, he's such a dick. Good God. But God, that's amazing. Like, if that guy's on your team, what are you worried about? And you have Rick Mahorn? Are you joking? I know. What if you're Isaiah Thomas, what are you worried about? You know what's crazy, Freddie, is I hadn't thought of that until right now, but Everybody else was like, that's just who we were. We were the bad boys. And he was like, still, fuck you. Fuck. You don't like me? I don't give a fuck. He was mean to his own teammates. I know. They'd come into the locker room. It'd be their first day. He'd be like, hey, this is how we do things here. So listen, if you have a problem with it, we're going to go outside and fight. Like, yo, it's my first day. Yeah. It's my first day. Where's my locker, bro? They brought me here to <laughs> score. What the, why are you intimidating me? My name's me? Adrian Dantley. Eat my dick. <laughs> I don't play for Seattle anymore. Yeah. Fuck you. <laughs> I'm here. 
Um, so that's my fourth dude. Lambeer he was such is an honorable jerk. mention for me. All right, nice. Without a doubt, honorable mention for me. I, I threw Brett Gardner in there. Man, you were brutal on him. Just Seems because like such a good dude. He is yeah. and scrappy. And, and I way, love how he goes in on umpires with no F's Kobe given. and Gardner on on a Boston team. I love. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. They got that hard at. And by the way. Brett Gardner, also one of the reasons I hate him, is he fucking kills the Red Sox. You know one of those guys that kills your team? Yeah, but he I feel like every team goes, he kills us because he's a grinder. He, yeah, you know, he's a good dude. He's a red ass. I can't even put Larry Bird in an honorable mention because I just respect his game so much. He even did the behind the back when Magic uh, was diagnosed with HIV out of tribute. He did that three-pointer and just looked away because he knew it was good. And that's such like a godfather gangster moment of like just killing all five families while you're at your kid's yeah. fucking <laughs> whatever it is, yeah. uh, confirmation. Like he was such a gangster and did it with a bad back. Like I can't hate on that guy. Kevin McHale, fuck that clothes. <laughs> dude. I take would that say, shit to the WWF. Don't take it on the court. Let me just say this right now. By the way, he was, it was just a hard foul. Kareem, that dirty motherfucker. Try, let Mikhail try to do that bullshit on Kareem and see what happens. Kareem, it would Kareem take him so long him to throw a kick. Jet. Bruce Lee taught him how to fight. Whip Mikhail's ass. Mikhail has that those long arms. Mikhail, Kareem has short velocity. Mikhail arms. could dunk and then block a shot at the other end at the same and time. Kareem That's how long. Bitch slapping him twelve times before he even so. landed on the ground. I, you get Kareem in here and Chuck Norris, and I'll whoop both their asses <laughs> right now. <laughs> oh, I wish I was cool enough for Chuck <laughs> to have him on sale. I am so glad you don't. I, I don't know him that I wish I did, man. Um, I'm asking for it next time I see Guys, him. I'm in Albany this weekend. You. Yeah. Uh, the end of this month, San Francisco. First weekend in November. I am in Houston. And then Houston. I'll be I'll be in uh, Omaha, Nebraska also. But um yeah, come check out a show, everybody. It's a good time. Yeah, except Noah Outlaw because uh, on Twitter, because you're too young, you can't get into the comedy clubs, even though you want to go scrub. Who? He'll know. Oh, okay. <laughs> I just wanted to talk shit to somebody okay. I got love uh, for. All right. Uh, but yeah, come check it out. And uh, comedianjoshwolf.com for tour dates. And by the way, everybody, do us a favor here. Write a review. Do you like this show? Tell tell a motherfucker. You want me to do... Oh, I forgot. I should have checked. They probably did. I said I was going to do a review with a voice. Next week, guaranteed, I'll do your re reviews in different voices. Oh, I thought you meant the TV show, The Voice. I'm like, yeah, I watch it. No, 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 no. Reviews for our show on iTunes. Oh, I like that. And I'll read them in voices. But should I read in voices, too? Yeah, you should. Who's picking the voices? Whoever. We you, could do that card game and whatever voice it oh, says we have to do. man. You know how bad I am. At That'll that. be funny. But it's in the other room. Well, we'll do it. Okay. I like that. What do you want to what do you want to plug? Um, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, you guys. Um, I appreciate all the love so far. We got two new games that we've done in the last two weeks. Um, we're dark this week, but we have some more stuff coming up. I have a new RPG group that's getting ready to play in uh the D D land. Well, more of the Star Wars D D land. Um, but uh that's coming in about a month and uh some other things too. So please subscribe, it's free. Don't worry about Twitch and stuff like that. I don't do Twitch anymore. I don't like you guys giving five bucks to watch me play video games. I'd rather give it to you for free. YouTube's a better platform for us. I just want it to grow. So tell your friends, subscribe, tell your mamas, tell your grandmamas. And let me just tell you one thing about... Whoa. Yeah, yeah, that was crazy. Landed on it. I know. Let me tell you one thing about the channel. If you like fun, you should be subscribing to this yeah, channel. Yeah, if you want to see me lose and everybody talk shit to me, then you should subscribe to this That's channel. That's what I mean by fun. Later, everybody. <laughs>